But let's talk about tailgating and impersonation. So tailgating is a technique where an attacker will basically take advantage of human kindness. They'll tell somebody to, hey, hold the door, keep that door open, or hey, can you let me in? Can you use your badge to swipe me in? I misplaced my badge. I left my badge at my desk. Uh, it's just a way you know, to try and take advantage of that human kindness because nobody really wants to be the guy who says, I'm sorry, I can't let you in. You don't have your badge or... Uh, no, I can't hold the door for you. That's against security regulations. Oftentimes, that's seen uh, as not a nice move. So attackers will take advantage of that. They'll put social pressure on people to allow themselves unauthorized access into an area. This often is used for electronic badge doors or doors with like a cipher lock where you'd have to type in a uh, key combination and it can be very effective uh, sometimes some techniques I've seen attackers use is they'll take a tray of donuts or a tray of pastries maybe like a pizza and like oh hey can you hold the door my hands are full I can't get to my badge and oftentimes it's very effective because it's taking advantage of that social norm helping somebody out by opening the door keeping the door open for them so the attacker will often easily gain access enter the door and uh, get access to the building. I myself have done security assessments where I've walked around with a clipboard. Just a clipboard, piece of paper, and a pen. And what that does is it shows that I'm doing some sort of business. I'll pretend like I'm doing an inspection. So I'll walk out, look around, I'll look at all of the, the lighting, the emergency lighting, the fire equipment, and I'll start writing something. It doesn't have to matter what I write. As long as I have that clipboard, that pen, and that piece of paper, it looks like I'm doing something. And I've gotten access to many different areas uh, to assess the security posture just by doing that one thing. It's amazing what you can do if you look the part. I remember one time in the, the Army, I went into a briefing. I accidentally went into the wrong briefing room. I was a security professional and I sat down and I ended up sitting down for uh, the deployment brief for Regional Command South in Afghanistan. So it was a complete, a full brief given to the base commander, General Campbell. And I had no business being there. It was a complete wrong room. But I made it look like, rather than sticking out like a sore thumb and being like, oh, I'm in the wrong place. I sat down and I started pretending to take notes with my book. And I just pretended to take notes, acted like I was there, waited a respectable amount of time, and then I got up and left. And I didn't have any problems for it, but I definitely could have if I would have, uh, if somebody would have noticed me being out of place. But I acted like I belonged there, and that's that's the key point. Uh, if you act like you belong there, you act like you're, it's, you're doing normal business, you're supposed to be there, you are a legitimate part of the organization, then you're probably going to gain access. Most people don't look twice. Now, how do you stop tailgating? Well, you can tell your personnel, your employees, okay, try not to let anybody in, particularly if you have a, a concern about tailgating. That's not really going to work because those social norms are so strong. So you can use what's known as a man trap. And a man trap is a device that's designed to prevent more than one person from entering at a time. So with a man trap, you uh, enter the man trap. You have to stop where there's a barrier that goes up that prevents one other person from entering the man trap behind you. You can also use guards if you have a security checkpoint and guards can ensure that every piece of credential is checked and people are checked one at a time. It's a very effective method. Uh, with man traps, so there's, you know, if you have ever ridden on a subway, you'll see a limited man trap like this or if you've ever gone into a football stadium. And it's usually a, a turnstile, kind of like a water wheel with three bars. And if you walk in, you hit the one bar with your legs and you turn it and it prevents somebody from 
walking in directly behind you using your same payment. More sophisticated man traps are actually maybe a, a little room, basically, like a little chamber. And the chamber, you walk into the chamber, the chamber completely seals off and then opens on the other side. So you have this little room that completely separates, almost like an airlock. And badges with photos, along with security guards, will definitely help uh, protect against that tailgating. Personation is when you assume another person's identity <clears throat> or claimed uh, their identity using a set of credentials. You can use this with, you know, phishing, or you can use this with other types of attacks. Uh, you can use this with phishing. You can claim you're somebody from the IT department. Hey, I need to check your computer. Can you verify these settings for me? And you can talk, to, you just call an in employee in the organization. If we're talking about trying to gain physical access to a building, you can accomplish impersonation by just dressing the part. How do people dress in that, uh, that space? Do they dress in a business suit? Then you might want to dress as a business suit as well. Do they have a badge? What does that badge look like? Well, uh, a, one technique that has been used by attackers is to take a photo of the badges as people walk out of the building, okay? Take a photo or several photos. Maybe you go to a coffee shop that's nearby the organization's building. And you take a photo of those badges that those people are wearing as they, as they leave or as they get lunch. Then you can make yourself an identical badge or something that looks very similar. So that requires some planning ahead, some extra research. And that will allow the, the attacker to successfully impersonate uh, an actual employee. And they might use something like tailgating in conjunction with that to gain physical access to a building. <laughs> How do you combat these types of attacks? Well, social engineering training is very important, I think, for all employees. Just to let people know that these types of attacks are out there and this is how uh, attackers can trying to gain information. A lot of people don't realize that attackers are more than just guys sitting in a dark room typing on a keyboard. Uh, they have that image in their head. They might not think that attackers are capable of these social engineering attacks. So training them in security awareness training and annual security awareness training is very helpful. Having badges, having photos, uh, having a means for personnel to report potential phishing attempts and potential personation attempts is very helpful. When you have that, uh, that rapport with the security team, if you have a security team that is liked and knows and interacts with the employees on a fairly regular basis, then those employees are going to be more uh, ready to report these types of incidences <laughs> to that security team. If you have a security team that no one in the company has ever heard of and never really interacts, doesn't make the training fun, then you're not going to have that interaction and these types of attacks are going to be a lot more successful.